Hi everyone, I'm Margarita Muradova, a personal stylist and fashion consultant from Cave Ukraine. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about an amazing thing that I keep wondering. There's so many trends popping up this year that I absolutely hate. <laughs> and I just felt like I wanted to share that with you. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be on the same wavelength with me on this one. And obviously, for sure, let me know in the comments below about the trends this year's trends that you absolutely hate, despise, and you would love to get rid of, and trends that you like, obviously. So this is a list of trends that I absolutely hate. And before we go that way, I also wanted to mention to all the haters out there saying navy and black don't match. They do. They do, girl, because look at this. Black, black, navy, match made in heaven so don't listen to anyone saying these don't match also don't listen to anyone saying brown and black don't match that's a perfect combo and also let me know honestly in the comments below if you'd like to see a video over here on this channel about myths fashion myths that are still circulating in the fashion sphere that are absolutely totally busted and i feel like are so unnecessary let me know in the comments below and let's start with this video So let's start with this list because it's a lengthy one and uh, hear me out. I absolutely am okay with people wearing whatever they want and I feel like fashion is there for us to be inspired and uh, take something that we like, implement that into our wardrobe, into our style, and also analyze what we like, what we don't like. I feel like that's a good exercise to do for yourself. When you look at trends, thinking of something that you align with, something that doesn't work for you, that is absolutely okay. So I don't want this to feel like I'm hating on you if you like these things, obviously. I just feel that these things are not, first of all, a part of my style. Second of all, they're a bit overrated and there's just too many of these particular things that I'm gonna mention. So as per usual, there's a list over here and the first item in here is like marked with a red marker with a lot of exclamation points because that's platform Uggs. And specifically, I want to mention platform Uggs from the newest collection with a trim, with like rustic kind of trim in there. This trim, for me, ruins it all. So platform Uggs are not the best. They could be styled amazingly, they could be styled casually, they could work in a look. But once you put that trim on the Uggs, they look absolutely crazy to me. They don't work with anything. I hate that trim with all the strength that I have. I hate that trim. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It looks ugly. I'm sorry, but it looks ugly and it messes everything up. If you're trying to create like a minimalistic kind of relaxed look, it doesn't work because you can see the trim. It's the same thing with, you know, like those bodycon dresses that look absolutely amazing. And then the person turns around and you see that there's a black zipper on the back, like a black statement crazy huge zipper on the back that ruins it all because the material of the dress is so delicate and the dress is so beautiful and so sophisticated so why put a huge ass zipper in there that's the same over here why would you ruin something that worked i'm totally okay with platform uggs honestly i'm not okay with platform uggs with this ugly trim because it ruins it all there's no minimalistic look with this one it looks blotchy it looks also not sophisticated enough. It doesn't look casual. It looks like they were cut off basically and there was something there and now it's not there and there's something left, like an artifact of some kind. It just looks so ridiculous and I'm so surprised by so many people liking these and this is definitely a moment where I can totally see that influencers and the whole Instagram posting thing totally works its wonders in terms of people being influenced and buying the same thing over and over again, whether it works for them, whether that's a part of their style or not, because obviously 
it's such a weird thing to have and this trim just doesn't work if you're into platform ox perfect just go with an ox without a trim it's gonna look so much more sophisticated so much more casual it's gonna work so much better with everything that you have in your wardrobe with jeans with leggings with skirts with 2000s like style etc etc just don't buy the ones that have a trim. The ones that have a trim, they kind of remind me of someone living in a northern pole or like something a Santa would wear. Okay, I have a specific memory in here. So I live in Ukraine, in Kiev. And when I was small, I was pretty small. So we went to different like markets. We obviously weren't that rich. We pretty poor and we went on a like street market to buy some stuff for me when I was young so we ended up in different stalls in, in all of these stalls there were like rows of these home slippers with different like weirdish trims and specifically and only grandpas and grandmas bought these kinds of home style shoes and these are exactly like a copy paste of those shoes so they don't work with anything in my mind they're house slippers with this specific trim without they can work with they do not i'm sorry let me know in the comments below if you agree with me like this video if you do dislike this video if you don't just let me know okay the next thing is one shoulder tops and hear me out. So one shoulder tops look absolutely amazing, very elegant, kind of sexy, but just not too much. The problem is that fashion does not necessarily think of women as like a couple of, well, not even a couple of like three billion, four billion population in the world. Fashion thinks of women as a specific kind of woman who has like zero to first size boob size, super small waist, very tall, very slender, extra extra small or extra small size, etc. etc. And only for those women, one shoulder tops work without any kind of a bra because once you have a bigger chest, what ends up happening is that these tops obviously do not have enough support in them to wear them without a bra. But once you wear a bra, you can definitely see it under the top. And it looks a bit messy. And I'm sorry, but I am a, like a very, very anal person about those things. I'm very into like small little details that make the difference or make or break a look. And this definitely does. So think of a bigger chested woman. For those women, I do not necessarily recommend one shoulder tops because you would need a lot of boob support for those. And it could be too obvious because obviously no bra straps. So maybe like a strapless bra, but then a strapless bra does not necessarily perfectly support a bigger kind of a chest area, if you know what I mean. So it ends up looking a bit messy, especially because these kinds of bras nowadays are also interlaced with a kind of a draping, which looks absolutely amazing. And I love draping trend in the fashion overall, but for this specific look, I just, for most women, it just wouldn't work. And also, I have a thing with underarms, like the skin folding underarms and all of this showing, especially if you go to an event and you're being photographed, there's something in there that just doesn't work for me. Just saying. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is 80s padded shoulder dresses, just like think Mark de Bertram, think Adico a couple seasons ago. They're still pretty much in fashion. They're not top tier trends, but there's something, they're actually something that people are wearing a lot at the moment. Because if you know like a fashion um, kind of pendulum, there's a fashion pendulum, which is basically something was in fashion, something's not in fashion, etc. etc. And it goes back and forth. And then there's a fashion cycle of different things for fashion trends specifically. What ends up happening is that when a fashion trend is implemented, there's pioneers that are catching up on the trend. They're the first to wear them. They're the first to post bloggers, fashion leaders, etc. And at that moment, people are like kind of very 
kind of cautious of the trend so the trend ends up being implemented like a couple of months a year after its first appearance in the fashion scheme so the whole inner smaller fashion circle is moving on is doing something else there were new collections new trends etc but the bigger public are actually still catching up to the first trend so in this instance basically what you see is a lot of mass market brands not only mass market but lo local brands are being inspired by this by this 80s big shoulder aesthetic voluminous mini dresses with like roses on them with bows on them etc and to me they're kind of gone because there's just so many of them being produced and they look so same same they look like a copy paste of the same thing all the time and to me what is the biggest ick in terms of like different trends and pieces is that when a person's style ends up being like not even developed but swayed by trendy items that are not necessarily a part of their style and therefore you kind of end up looking like each other and also you kind of end up losing your personal stylistic spark therefore i feel like this is just as like a, such a statement piece a big shoulder a prince a draping a mini dress etc that i feel like this needs to be a part of your style in order to wear it properly especially when there's just so much of the same thing on the market it just loses all appearance and all appeal to me personally and the last thing i'm gonna talk about and i know i'm gonna be hated and slayed here is an all y2k look listen up i feel like 2000s are still pretty much very much in at the moment and if you know me if you know my background etc etc i've been doing this trend forecasting thing yearly actually it's called a trend book and i've been doing this a couple of years in a row actually at the moment i keep doing this this is basically a huge webinar yearly webinar a trend forecast for our webinar with a huge PDF document attached to it where I basically in a live form tell you everything and anything that's going to be happening in fashion for the next year and it's pretty popular people like it i'm telling all about the trends that are going to be happening in the year all the specifics of these trends all the silhouettes all the colors materials prints etc etc everything fashion formulas the brands to look forward to fashion bloggers to follow etc so um i definitely have personally told people that 2000s are in at the moment still so i'm not canceling that don't get me wrong but what i'm saying is when you have too much of the same thing in a look it ends up looking kind of like uh, be just because there's no appeal to a look there's no depth to a look it's very like one dimensional so to me when someone doesn't have the strength and capability to kind of create a more well-versed look and add up some things of their own personal style as opposed to copying a total y2k look it's just like it's almost the same as someone wearing a total dolce gabbana look as someone wearing a total any other brand look because it doesn't have a like sense of their personal stylistic choice and in here to me specifically a total y2k look is almost the same as someone wearing a total 90s 50s look because it looks like you pulled it all from a closet like from your grandma's closet or in this case your mom's closet or your sister's closet and just put it on and sometimes things from the past even though they're trendy they end up being kind of reworked so if you wear each and every item in your look all of the pieces of this puzzle from the same era and also created in that era not inspired by the era you kind of look outdated still even though you're wearing by design a trendy thing because like for example a sharper toe for issue at the moment is not as sharp as it was in the 2000s so it's still sharp it's pretty pointy but it's not as sharp
and the heel is not as stiletto-y as it was in there. And it's okay if you have only this one thing from 2000s that's actually vintage, that was worn that at that moment, etc. But if all of the items in your look are very like vintage and vintage looking, you end up looking like a museum exhibition as opposed to a real person having their stylistic expression, if you know what I mean. So yeah, this is it for this video. Let me know in the comments below which trends you absolutely despise. Obviously, I'm here for it. Go full on. Don't hold yourself back. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.